Uh, welcome back. I hope ki you have finished your tea and we are going to start something. Whatever we have discussed, I'm sure you are totally comfortable and the entire economics we have to discuss under these three concepts, production, income, expenditure. Now we are going to move to something different, something different. Again, I would say ki whatever I'm going to discuss, I'm going to teach, you are not going to find in any book, okay? So let us move to a very simple question. Throughout the world, how many countries are there? Throughout the world, how many countries are there? So around 200. Exact numbers, I don't know. But whatever they are, around 200. So all the countries, they can be divided into three categories. Developed countries, developing countries, and underdeveloped countries. It's a broad parameter. Developed, okay, developing that is our country, and the third is underdeveloped. But I will go for broad classification. I will say developed countries, they can be called rich country. Developed countries, so they can be called rich country. But the remaining two, developing and underdeveloped. So can they be called poor country? So yes, they can be called poor country. So I will go for okay, poor country, our country. So rich countries versus poor countries. Means developed countries, they have been called, they are being called rich country. And the developing and underdeveloped, so they can be called poor country. Okay, in the first part, in the first part, we will discuss okay, this problems of Indian economy. In, when I say Indian economy, it's a true for most of the poor country. In the second part, we will discuss the problems of the rich country or simply problems of the world economy. Yes, problems are there okay, everywhere. Yesterday, I told you that reason becomes remedy. 50% discount is always there. Once you know the reason, you know the remedy because the reason itself is going to become a remedy. Problems are there everywhere, whether it's a poor country or rich country. It's, you cannot say that rich country, they don't have any problem. Yes, they are also facing lots of problems. Okay, it's just like the poor people and the rich people, both have their own problem. Both have their own set of problems. The only thing is the nature of problem may be different. The poor people, poor, they are dying of starvation, the rich because of overeating. But the problems are there everywhere. So these things are so important. Okay, in the first part, we will discuss problems of Indian economy. Problems of Indian economy. What are our problems? How they are interrelated? What are the reasons? And once I say, okay, once you know the reason, you know the remedy. In the second part, and what has been the policy of the government in that regard, yes, so that you can understand the current policies very well and you can comment on the policy. That is the key. In the second part, we will take up the problems of the world economy, rich country. Okay, developed countries particularly, what are their problems? What are their problems and how they have moved forward? And the main thing is, okay, how, what type of relationship there? How these two problems, they are linked with each other. And the linking is the key. People fail to link the things, creating huge problems for themselves. Nowadays, okay, it's a global world. Global world, every country has a right to make some policy. American government has made some policy. Yes, it has a right to formulate the policy, implement the policy, and keep on changing the policy. But when American government is changing or making some changes in their policy, do you think it will have its impact on Indian economy? Yes, it will have its impact, not only in India, throughout the world, where? Everywhere. But we fail to understand how the things are working. And okay, in India, I can see there are two types of residents, most of the gen. First, who don't know anything, and second, who knows everything wrong. The problem with you people, okay, you lack clarity, and all the time, you keep on commenting on the policy of the government. But from your comment okay, on the social media, <coughs> in most of the cases, I come to know, I realize. You are not in the right direction. You lack concept. Okay? And unless you think, have the concept, application, no question. So we are going to start with okay, the first part, problems of Indian economy. Our problem, they are so many. There are so many. All the problems, they are interrelated. All the problems, they are interdependent and all they are cause and effect of each other. It's a, just like a closed circle where 
there, there is no beginning point, no end point. So problem is from where to start and where to conclude. So problems of the poor countries include India. So they are very well shown with the help of a cycle or simply circle. This is known to be vicious circle of poverty. The name of the circle is vicious cycle of poverty. We say cycle of poverty. In a cycle, you know, there is, in a circle, there is no beginning point, no end point. Every point can be called beginning point, every point can be called end point. Remember, when we discuss this cycle in detail, this cycle or circle is going to be your entire syllabus. Entire syllabus. In the mains, there are 10 units. There are 10 units, and all the 10 units, they are basically the different sides of the same coin. And when I discuss this cycle in detail, you will come to know okay, what is going to happen and what is basically the significance, how the units of the syllabus, they are interrelated. So the problem starts with the cycle, vicious cycle of poverty. I repeat the sentence again, okay, this cycle is going to be your entire syllabus. Entire syllabus, the only thing you have to link the thing that I will give you, no beginning point, no end point. So where to start? So from somewhere, we will have to start. Okay. So I'm starting from here. Okay. But these three, you have to remember all the time. Production means, production means income, and income means expenditure. These three are called three economic activities. And okay, within these three, the entire economics, we have to discuss. So from where to start? So we are going to start with here. Okay, it's a problem with the poor country. It's a low production. It's a low production. The poor countries, their problem starts because their total production is very, very low. Production is very low. Now, why not only the total production is very low, but also the productivity is also very low. Now, what is the meaning of the word productivity? Now, return whatever we are getting from the factors of production return we get from the factors of production, they are very, very low. For example, take the case of agricultural land. Economic survey has reported, economic survey has reported in India per hectare, agriculture production is around 3000 kilogram per hectare. Per hectare, agricultural output on an average it's a 3,000 kilogram. Those in China, it is 5,800 kilogram. And those in USA, it is around 7,000 kilogram. So return, whatever we are getting from our factors of production, it's a very, very low. So reasons are so many. Reasons are so many. We have not been able to manage our resources properly. Yes, a wastage of resources. Second, our technology, it is basically not up to the date. This productivity is very high because they are using latest technology. So there are various reasons behind the low productivity and hence low production in India. But ultimately, ultimately production level is very, very low. Take the case of developed countries. So developed countries, they are very small in size, but their output level, their production level is very, very high. And from here, difference is created. Take the case of America. America is the largest economy of the world on the ground of GDP. GDP of America, USA, it is around $22 trillion. And those of India, approximately $3 trillion. Although our population is around 140 crores and their population is hardly 35 crores. So population of USA, it is one fourth those of India, but their total production is seven times, more than seven times that of India. Yes, even the China, the population wise, both are equal. Both are equal, but Chinese GDP around $14 trillion. So it is approximately five times more than those of India. So developed countries, they are very small in size, but their total output, total production is very, very high. Take the case of Japan. On the basis of GDP, Japanese ranking is third. Our system, so ranking of Japan is third. But Japan is a very small country, very small country. But see their output level. 
and because they are more committed to their production they have made production their main issue i repeat okay, these countries who can be called developed countries so they have made production their major issue and the rest of the issues for them they are secondary production has become their main issue let us produce more let us produce more they keep on producing using latest technology utilizing their available resources at its optimum level but india you know it's a very unique country very different in nature for indian people production has never remained our major issue i repeat production has never remained our main issue our issues are bigger the trivial issues in india they are getting prominence and yes okay production has never remained our main issue so ultimately the outcome is ki these countries their total production as well as productivity of the resources they have remained very very low now because of low production here i mean to say national production production that is taking place in the country so low production production means income production means income so low national uh, production resulting in low national income n for national y for income since i have to write so many things so i will be using shortcut okay so low production means low national income because production and income they are the two sides of the same coin try to see this circle in detail because this circle is going to be your entire syllabus entire syllabus so low national production will result in low national income because production means income these are the two sides of the same coin now okay, total national income national income is very low divided by population when national income is divided by population we get per capita income so national income is very low and divided by huge per capita income huge population so resulting in low per capita income per capita income of poor country including india is a very very low i repeat the sentence again ki national income when it is divided by population it becomes per capita income so per capita income of india is a very low reason is very simple two reason low national income and divided by huge population so per capita income it is changing in the recent times it has improved and approximately you can check the current data when i saw the last data it was around 1 lakh 34000 1 lakh 34000 that was the current price per capita income at national average level but okay, within india i said earlier we can see the whole world some of the states can be called developed states some of them developing some of them backward yes on the basis of per capita income goa in india it is on the top it is per capita income of goa is a 4 lakh 65000 second spot is a sikkim then comes delhi okay so they are can be called developed states of india but let us see the backward states yeah 28th ranking this is of bihar is only 45000 second from the top is a up 65000 rupees so they are basically they are lagging sector okay they can be called backward state why they have lag behind the others so because of lack of production production has not taken place it is not taking place in those states which are called backward state so production is the reason so production becomes a remedy now let us make a global comparison global comparison so when we convert this into dollar so our per capita income it is coming around it keeps on fluctuating because you know ki the exchange rate it means the rate at which dollar is converted into rupee or maybe vice versa they keep on changing in the last okay, one month our rupee has become weaker against dollar okay, so let us go for around 2000 to make the to make the calculation easy so i will go for 2000 dollar so our per capita income it is around 2000 american dollar in the, although in the recent time okay it has increased it has increased now let us make a comparison with those of other countries take the case of japan per capita income of japan japanese people it is around it is around 52000 american dollar 52000 so per capita income of japan is a 22 times more than those of india yes on the basis of per capita income the richest country of the world is a uh, qatar 
it's a Qatar and it is basically more than one lakh American dollar. Similarly, Singapore, that used to be a very poor country. Now the per capita income of Singapore is uh, almost more than 25 times those of India. Per capita income of USA, it is around 40 times more than those of India. So we can see huge difference, huge difference between we people and those people means I mean to say the developed people. So reason is very simple, low production resulting in low national income divided by huge population. So what about per capita income? So per capita income is very low because per capita income is very low. What about a standard of living? A standard of living, it is also going to be very, very low. Yes, we people of India, the poor countries people, so their standard of living is a very, very poor, very, very poor. We have to generalize the thing. We cannot take the exceptional cases. There's a huge difference between per capita income, what we people maintain and what the people belonging to developed country they maintain. It is very, okay, you can say, sorry to say, it's a, it is said that, and maybe it's said correctly, keep a standard of living of the pet animals of developed countries is a better than those of Indian people. That is correct. Okay, so standard of living of poor country is a very, very poor. Reason very simple, because of low per capita income. Now, because per capita income is very low, not only, not only a standard of living is poor, but also okay, what will happen to saving? The rate of saving is very, very low. Low saving okay, is the feature. Reason is saving is that part of income which is not consumed. So one is our per capita income is very low. Moreover, rate of inflation is very high. So we are struggling to meet our both end. No question of, okay, a very little scope of generating surplus. Okay. So because of that, because of that, so low saving okay, is the outcome. Low per capita income resulting in low consumption means low standard of living. And because of that, low saving. Okay, few years ago, few years ago, one report claimed that ki more than 50%, one report claimed that ki more than 50% of Indian people, they don't visit bank in their entire life because they don't have the surplus. <coughs> so those were the days. And moreover, opening a bank account with Indian bank, it was also a big challenge. But then 2014, new government came out with a okay, new policy, Jandhan account, Jandhan Yojana. Under that, poor people, their account was open. And under Jandhan Yojana, okay, more than, till now, when I'm teaching, more than 42 crores of bank accounts were open, more than 42 crores. Now, opening a bank account is not a big issue. The big issue to have some balance in that account. So under Jandhan, more than 42 crores of bank accounts were open. And even today, more than 70% of the bank account under Jandhan, the balance is zero. Most of the common people in India, they fail to manage or maintain a minimum average balance. And for that, they are getting penalized. So this has been the problem. The rate of saving in India is a very low. Right now, it is 27% of GDP. Earlier, a few years ago, okay, data was different. So I don't want to do that. Now, low saving. 1% saving is converted into another person's investment. Okay, linking Finnish Bank, this we have discussed. 1% saving is converted into another person's investment. And the linking pin is the bank. So low saving will result in low investment. Okay, low investment. Low saving resulting in low investment. Now, because investment level is very low, it will lead to 